All right, the next thing we want to do, or the last thing we want to do before we start handling these requests and routing them somewhere, is get the payload that the user sent. This is going to be a bit more complicated than the others, but is still fairly straightforward. So let's go ahead and above this response, say what we're trying to do. Get the payload if there is any. For this, we're going to need a, another library that's built into Node, and that is called string decoder. So we're going to require it up here. We're going to say that var string decoder equals require string underscore decoder dot string decoder. The string decoder library contains a number of useful things. Uh, and the string de decoder functions that we want are actually available on the string decoder parameter within that object. So now they're available to us at the variable string decoder. Now back to getting the payload. First thing we want is to create a new string decoder. So we're going to say that this decoder equals new string decoder. And when you create a new string decoder, you want to tell it what kind of char set or encoding it can expect or you know what it should be decoding. And for our case, it's going to be UTF-8. This is going to be the case with pretty much any you know, JSON API that you're going to be building, unless you're specifically trying to do something other than UTF-8, which will probably very rarely be the case. So as you might have heard, Node deals heavily with these things called streams. We don't need to do a deep dive into what streams are right now, but it's worth knowing that they are pretty much what they sound like. They are bits of information that are coming in a little bit at a time as opposed to all at once. Payloads that come as part of an HTTP request come in to the HTTP server as a stream. And so we need to collect that stream as it comes in. And then when the stream tells us we're at the end, coalesce that into one coherent thing before we can figure out what that payload is. Because as we receive little bits of this payload, we might only know a few characters at a time, but we are really interested in what the entire payload is in its entirety once it is finished streaming in. So in order to do that, before we start catching the payload as it comes in, we want to create a new string to hold it. I'm just going to call it buffer for now. And I'm going to initialize it to an empty string itself. Then as new data comes in, I'm going to append it to this existing string here. We do that by binding to an event that the request object emits, and that event is called data. So when the request object emits the event, so on the event called data, we want this callback to be called and we want the data that is being emitted to be passed to this callback. And what we want to do is we want to say that that buffer we created up here should have the new data appended to it through a string decoder. So the buffer is going to be appended with decoder dot write and then the data that we received. So what that means is as this data is streaming in, every time it streams in a little piece, the request object emits the data event that we are binding to and it sends us a bunch of undecoded data. We know it should be UTF-8, so we decode it to UTF-8 using this new UTF-8 decoder that we created, and we append the result onto the buffer that we created a moment ago. What that means is a large string that's streaming in is going to be received by us little pieces at a time, but eventually, after this data event emits you know, a certain number of times, it's all going to be there and the buffer is going to have it all as a normal UTF-8 string. 
but there's actually another event that tells us that it's done when it's done. And that is called end. So when the request object emits, so rec on end, we want to call this callback, which doesn't take any parameters. And that's going to tell us, okay, this is the end. So the buffer is going to be appended with whatever we just ended it with, decoder.end. And now that the request has finished, we want to do the things that we were doing before, namely sending the response and logging the request. So we're moving the response sending and the request logging from where they used to live, just inside the function body, into the handler of the end event. Now, you might be saying not every request is going to have a payload. So is this end event going to get called? The answer is yes. The end event will always get called. This data event won't always be called. So if there is no payload, the buffer is going to get initialized to an empty string. It's never going to get anything appended to it, but then it's going to get ended and we're still going to send the response. And let's go ahead and say that the re request was received with this payload and go ahead and log out whatever the payload was. Okay, so just to walk back through this one more time to make sure it's totally coming home, we created a decoder that we're using later on. Uh, the buffer is, I'm calling it buffer, it's really just a, a placeholder for a string. As that request payload gets streamed in, the request object is going to emit a data event that we're binding on. So the request on this data object, we get a new bit of data, and then we use the decoder to turn that into a simple string through UTF-8. And then when it ends, we cap off the buffer with whatever the request ended with, we send the response and then log out what the payload was. This is how streams are generally handled in Node.js. You don't simply just grab the value of a stream. You need to bind to the data events of a stream or the ending event of a stream or whatever events the stream has defined so that you can grab the little pieces of information that the stream is sending along and then know when the stream has finished. In this way, we are actually using another part of the Node.js docs right now, which is called stream. Streams are built into Node. Uh, they're a fundamental concept, especially when it comes to HTTP servers or any kind of servers. And this is generally how you deal with them. You can create them or you can read them in. So let's go ahead and start the server again. Node index.js, server is listening. We're gonna go back over to Postman here. And now we're going to add a body to our request. In order to have a body, we need to switch to something other than get because technically, according to the definitions of get, um, it shouldn't have a, any kind of payload there. So we're gonna to switch to a post. And now we're going to add that the body should be a raw body that's just text, and this is the body we are sending. Let's go ahead and send it. Send it, we got hello world back. Let's see what the application thought it received. It received, this is the body that we are sending. So that is how you stream in a payload that comes in. This could be for a giant payload, like a huge JSON object in our case, um, or this could be for a small bit of text or nothing at all. Um, let's send one more request without the body, the one that we did previously, just to make sure that the API is still working even if there is no body. So the request has been received with this payload, nothing. In our case, it'd be an empty string because that's what we initialized this buffer variable to. Okay, so now we can move on to the next lecture.